You're listening to the Credit Union Leadership Podcast, a podcast that delivers value and offers up insight that'll help your credit union grow. Service Star has been consulting with credit unions for over 20 years, growing them in the areas of cultural development, leadership development, and management training. To learn more about what Service Star can do for you or your credit union, check them out at servicestarconsulting.com. On today's Credit Union Leadership Podcast, we're all about inspiring transformational change, and we're doing so by going out and grabbing some best class insights from marketing expert and guru Adam Mark. Sit back, listen, and enjoy this episode of the Credit Union Leadership Podcast. So, so Adam, uh, inform the listeners What's your what's your background in marketing and uh, what's your kind of specialty? I guess there's brand marketers, there's people that build websites for a living, there's people that get your tracking on Google to look really good. Uh, what where's your niche? Where do you swim usually? Well, yeah, long term, I've been involved in all of those things. I've worked in TV advertising for a long time, and I moved out of more traditional advertising into a focus on digital advertising in about 2014 and just more and more over the years. And in 2017, I came to 2060 Digital. So while I work with credit unions and other businesses and and, and advise a lot on, on brand, on the whole marketing picture, what we execute for our clients is specific to digital. So we utilize a lot of Google because that's where people search for for financial uh, products and services when they don't know where to go or they're looking for alternatives to what they may uh, be receiving from their bank or current credit union. So, yeah, a lot, a lot of Google stuff. Yeah. Well, one of the things that you've helped out even my clients with is Google mapping data. So tell me a little bit about what's changing in the industry uh, of marketing and how does that apply specifically to credit unions? Well, you named one of the biggest changes that I've seen in the last five years, which was, you know, when we think of maps, we think of we're getting directions, uh, you know, we're using GPS to, to go somewhere. And if we're talking about almost any type of map, that is the case. It's what we're doing, um, which isn't terribly relevant to credit unions unless somebody's you know, going going to a branch and they want to avoid traffic or figure out how to get there for the first time. Google Maps is the, is the thing that kind of turned all of this on its head because search engine optimization, trying to rank for you know, keywords like credit union, uh, checking accounts, mortgages, all these, uh, these products and services was, you know, there was a section at the bottom of Google. You could pay to be at the top and you could try to rank on the first page uh, in the what we call the organic rankings. And then Maps came along. And all of a sudden, that thing that used to just be how we got directions to to restaurants became crucial to local marketing because there's a we call it the map pack. There's a top three uh, that typically shows up when someone conducts a local search, and we we have found that it's it's paramount to rank there uh, for as many vital keywords as possible, and that's what we've spent a lot of time focusing on uh, since roughly 2018. If, if there was an opportunity to maybe uh, take a turn down a different road, I know Apple Maps has been trying to, you know, beat out Google Maps and there's Waze, which I believe maybe is owned by Google. Tell me a little bit more about some of these other maps that are out there. Is is optimizing on the Google platform helping you in, in an Apple Maps scenario or is there another way to optimize for those other platforms that are trying to compete with that Google for that map space? So. It- it's really industry specific uh, in terms of our focus on other maps. Apple Maps is probably your your number two map uh, app that people would use in the credit union uh, industry. Not in any financial. It's it's not that crucial because again, the nature of the map isn't necessarily. I'm I'm looking for uh, a, a financial institution that where I can get a mortgage. People don't do that on Apple Maps. I might be looking for a restaurant. That's a great place. You know, you, you want to make sure that you rank uh, and, and your address is correct and all that stuff on Apple Maps. But when it comes to the, you know, trying to rank for, for those most crucial keywords, uh, Google Maps is really the only one that matters present day uh, for a credit union. Okay, so Google Analytics is looking at more than just uh, what's on what's on your website. 
Uh, it's looking at mm-hmm. what's on on the maps, who's searching for what keywords and that kind of stuff. And you you had mentioned to me uh, recently that the standards for um, how Google Analytics is is working and and the platform in which they're using has been upgraded. How does that impact credit unions, and, and what what does that mean for someone that may be in that chief marketing officer suite? Well, it's it's impacted uh, folks in you know, leading marketing for credit unions quite a bit in the last few months because they had to get ready, put code on their website, make sure they had the new version of Google Analytics, which is Google Analytics 4, set up. Now that it's there, now it's time to actually use it. And uh, uh, that's that, that's a, that's a different animal altogether. Uh, what I'm finding is a lot of people are kind of concerned about the differences between the two. Uh, if you if you get in and 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 just look at your options and start to start to just use it on a daily basis the way we use the old version of the Google Analytics, I, what I'm finding is the 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 differences aren't that vast. Uh, there are some different fields and some different default settings, uh, but you can pretty much go and and recreate all of the favorites that you used to have in the old version of Analytics. And there's some. Um, some filtering and some, some options that are that are way better than the old version that are allowing us to do our job more efficiently. So uh, now that we're through the implementation process and everyone should hopefully uh, have it set up and have uh, the data registering, I, I don't feel like the the hurdles are that high to to you know become more familiar with it and start using it. When credit unions go to update their website, typically what they're looking to do is reduce friction for the end user. So, you know, if I can just breathe into my phone and open a new membership uh, with that, credit unions are like, yeah, let's do that versus, you know, giving them a uh, laborious uh, process to get that stuff set up. Um, So as they reduce friction for the members by making a 10 step process, a one step process, kind of the Amazon feel. Does that actually help ranking and and findability of your your credit union if if people have less steps on your website or is there any disparate impact to having a a better experience for members and and how it ranks? There can be uh, because now that we're now that we're in a a mobile you know thumb scrolling environment versus you know obviously a lot of us still sit at a desktop computer on a daily basis but. Uh, we're utilizing uh, our, our phones and, and those touch screens uh, much more often. Uh, and if you want to have a great user experience, you want to streamline that and make it really simple. You could theoretically, in some instances, make it make your website one page. It's just an infinite scroll, and that could help uh, that user experience. And that would be bad for ranking on Google because, unfortunately, that changing user experience uh, you know what the mechanism to to rank for multiple keywords for multiple products and services requires pages. So you have to go horizontally across a website with multiple sections and pages to have the titles and the the keywords and all of that built in to rank for multiple. So if you just had one page, which could be a great user experience, it's actually going to set you back because you can't rank that one page for all of the all the terms that, that you would you would try to rank. It's really hard competing against the Facebooks and the Amazons and the Apples. And I, I don't think most credit unions think that they compete with these major brands. But when it comes for dollar to dollar for a commercial ad or a ad on you know Facebook, yeah, you, you're competing against Apple, who is putting millions and billions of dollars into marketing space to be the number one searched thing uh, when you check been checking account, right? Because uh, Apple's got an account now for banks for to use. So um, <laughs> let's let's talk about credit unions here. Not for profit, right? This is not mm-hmm. an industry where we can throw gobs of money and try to compete against even the biggest banks in our industry. What are some of those creative things that you can give our credit union listeners that maybe it's not Facebook, maybe it's not Google, but it's it's actually better and it costs less because not a lot of people are going there today. Well, it is Google, but it's not <clears throat> necessarily Google ads in the sense that that most of us would think, especially those of us in marketing, which is if you do a Google search for mortgages, you're going to typically see banks and maybe credit unions, depending on you know where you're located, show up at the top of the page in the paid search results. It says sponsored. We can kind of all, yeah, most of us understand that that's an ad. That's a good place to be, but that's, an, as you mentioned, it's an auction. 
Um, it's going to be highly competitive. Um, those are valuable keywords, and you have a lot of big banks that are going to that are going to bid on a keyword like uh, mortgage rates and uh, mortgages. So, the place that we find advantageous is after the search, because if you look at the statistics on that paid ad at the top of Google, if you're lucky, if it's they're not looking for your credit union by name, you'll probably have a seven to ten percent click through rate. You know, somebody's going to click on that text ad and come to your website if it's a really good campaign. And you're not going to show up 100 percent of the time because it is a, an auction on a daily basis that you know, you'll typically run out of budget. So about roughly 95 percent of the time, someone's not clicking on your ad. So even when you're winning, you're losing in, in that in that uh, Google ads arena. But Google also has other products in their suite. They own YouTube, which is a great place to take the Google data, which they have these in-market segments. Somebody, if somebody's actively searching for uh, a checking account or an auto loan or a mortgage, Google's going to put them into a an in-market segment for that uh, financial product, and then we can continue to serve ads as long as they're continuing to stay in market. Uh, we're able to put an ad on YouTube to run digital ads on you know websites like. Yeah, ESPN.com or the Weather Channel app or places like that using Google data. And you can do that typically at a lower cost than if you're trying to compete at the very top of the search. So those are avenues that we would we definitely use um, in, you know, in support of what we're doing on that Google search page, both paid and organically, to help you know, bring down that cost uh, of bringing that that person to their website to learn more about the credit union yeah the credit unions are nimble right so they're smaller but that means they can turn the corner on an idea faster than maybe a larger conglomerate could think a speedboat versus the titanic analogy right the speedboat can turn a lot quicker than the titanic can and so you know new things like that that come out are super super exciting but i want to i want to kick it old school with you just for the last mm-hmm. part of our segment on today's podcast. Thanks again for being here. We got Adam Mark on the line here from 2060 Digital. Uh, that's about digital campaigns. And I'm about to ask him a question that's going to uh, not be about digital at all. Billboards. Is there a still place? Is there a place for billboards or things like a billboard in 2023? There is, uh, especially if uh, it, the, if you have uh, challenges in terms of visibility, uh, yeah, I, I, you see it all the time. Billboards are very directional in nature in a couple of different ways. The first one that we probably see, the example we see most often is we all know what McDonald's and Starbucks are, but we may not know that there's one coming up three miles and they're going to use that billboard to remind us. So that's very directional in nature. And then the other instance is a location may not be, you know, on, on the busiest street in the in the most visible place and a lot of businesses and um, they have some credit union branches can use it to drive yeah to, to help people find a difficult to find location now I have a different perspective on billboards because I've worked in advertising my entire adult life I see them I'm aware of them I can tell you who you know is is on the way to the office and most people are not like that. Uh, when I ask my wife about a billboard, she has no idea because she doesn't look at them. So everyone's different. And, uh, I, you know, we, we kind of have to throw out our own experience when, if, we're, if we're marketers because you know, we're, we're probably going to pay attention to to those messages more often than, than most people do. So there's definitely still a place for it, but I don't think you're going to you you can gain some branding, some recall, uh, but maybe not drive home a particular message, uh, a particular product offering, something more short term. Uh, but you know, there's still a lot of traditional media, like you know, television's changing a lot. But we still, you know, you look at a TV ad in the local news can still be very very impactful if it if it has the right creative and and you know, it's reaching the right people with some frequency. Uh, yeah, the the digital advertising can be very targeted, but um, building brands, creating that recognition, I th- I find still takes a mix of of the traditional, of uh, the old school, and uh, and the new school things that we're doing. Any parting words for the credit union leaders? Stay flexible, stay open, learn, uh, but 
I, I say that you know with some caution because if you learn from the wrong people, <laughs> you can, you can you can be in trouble. That's a difficult thing I think that I find when I whenever uh, I, I'm talking to marketing leaders is who do I, who do I learn from? So um, that's that's a like, we could spend another podcast on, on on that topic. But yeah, you you have to be curious. You can't close yourself off. I mean, it's it, I think what I hear all the time is. So many people are calling me about advertising. I get 15 calls and emails and LinkedIn messages a day, and then we can tend to bury our head in the sand because it's just too it's too loud. There's too much noise, and then you miss opportunities to learn and and and, and adapt. So stay open, but 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 be skeptical. Thank you for dialing in, getting some industry insights from our marketing guru, Adam Mark. If you're interested in learning more about marketing and credit union leadership, let us know. We'll have Adam back on the podcast in the show notes. We're going to have some links out to his LinkedIn profile as well as his company, 26 City Marketing out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, for me, that's it here, folks, for this episode of the Credit Union Leadership Podcast. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Credit Union Leadership Podcast. We'll catch you there.